Welcome to ECE 203 Signals Information and Computing. This is the first video lecture. Um, these video lectures are meant to really just summarize and go over essentially the same material that we saw in the in-person lecture. So if you go to the lectures, you don't necessarily need to watch these videos uh, unless you just want to review for the exam. So I'm the instructor. My name is Matt Malloy. The best way to get a hold of me is at mmalloy at wisc.edu. Like I said, the title of the course is Signals, Information, and Computing. And I want you guys to think about how every time you make a, a phone call, so every time you use your cell phone, you listen to digital music, maybe use the internet, play a video game, watch a video on, on YouTube that's transmit to your laptop over Wi-Fi, you're using signals, information, and computing. I want to define these terms in the context of this class. All right. So a signal is just going to be a measurable quantity that may or may not vary as a function of time or space. So you can think of, uh, you know, a, a ton of signals, right? We all have some notion of what this means, but for example, in, in audio signal, my voice, right? This is a, it's a sound wave and it's a signal that's a function of time. It's a, it's a pressure wave that's changing over time. You can also think of an, an image, right? A digital image is also a signal, and that's a, a function of space, right? So pick a particular pixel, and that depends on the location in the image, um, and that value of that pixel, of course, is a function of what pixel it is. Okay, so the next term is, is information, right? And Information is just a message or meaning that's conveyed by a signal. Okay? And ultimately in, in electrical and computer engineering, uh, information is represented with bits, okay? Okay, and bits are just zeros or ones. Okay. So the, the, the last word in the title of the course is computing. And uh, for our purposes, computing is just going to be processing uh, or analysis of signals and information. Okay, and uh, computing is really done with mathematical algorithms. Okay, so there's another new word, but uh, let's write this out. Done with algorithms. Okay. So let's define algorithms too. So an algorithm really is just a, a, a 
step-by-step -step set of instructions used for making a uh, mathematical calculation. So step-by-step -step Okay, so uh, that's really what this course is going to be about. And so we're going to look at algorithms, which we just defined, right, which are step-by-step -step instructions for, for making uh, some sort of calculation. Okay, And uh, that's very related to computing. Right? Computing requires algorithms, and computing is just processing of signals and information. Okay, So we're going to deal with, uh, in this course, really kind of the mathematics and the understanding behind these three things. So let's see an example um, of this. So of course your, your iPhone, for example. All right. So the way an iPhone works is say you want to call your friend, your iPhone transmits an electromagnetic wave, right? a very particular electromagnetic wave. And that's actually picked up at a, a base station. Okay, so there's this transmission and reception of, um, of course, uh, signals, okay? okay? And, you know, after you call your friend, right, the base station then routes the call uh, to likely another base station, which then connects you to your friend, right? So this first signal goes all the way, it, it changes, and of course, when it hits the, the base station, it's no longer an electromagnetic wave, right? Then it's just a voltage on a wire, um, and that travels to another base station. So the whole time, it's still, of course, a signal. So that then is transmitted again by the base station. Um, and now let's say this is your friend's cell phone. Of course, it's transmit back by another electromagnetic wave to your friend's cell phone. Okay. In this case, the signals carry and convey information, right? And that information is the message you're trying to, to convey using your voice. Okay. All right. And so in order for all of this to work and all of these things to happen, um, we need hardware, and in particular the CPU on the, on the iPhone, and of course a lot of other dedicated har hardware uh, to, to do uh, the computation required to make this happen, okay, and to use the algorithms. So, so this, is, this part is the computation. All right, now I want to point out a few um, particular pieces of hardware on the, the iPhone. Um, look at this big thing here. This is the central processing unit, so the CPU. And it, this is an older iPhone, but it's made by uh, Samsung in, in this version of the iPhone. Okay, so there's also other things on here. There's, uh, in this lower corner, this is a, a power chip. Okay, and then if we look down here, there's a bunch of other radios on here also, right? Which of course deal with reception of electromagnetic signals. So one is this. Uh, um, if anybody's used Bluetooth before, which I'm sure people have, this is the Bluetooth chip that I just circled, and uh, um, we circled the Wi-Fi chip. Okay. So these deal with reception of the uh, of electromagnetic signal, and then they do some converting of this to bits and therefore convert it to information. 
what's not shown on this picture that we can talk a little bit of, more about is uh, it's actually on the back side of this board there's a GPS receiver okay so GPS global positioning system um, and that's another chip made by Infineon okay so let's talk a little uh, uh, actually a lot more in, in depth about what that GPS chip does at a very high level GPS works as follows there's a number of satellites there's uh, actually between 20 and 30 active satellites orbiting the earth at any time and each one of these satellites transmits um, a signal okay so you can imagine in, just in this picture there's three satellites orbiting the earth each one transmits a unique signal And that signal is, is actually, it's a slightly perturbed sine wave, okay? So it's an electromagnetic signal. That's at about 1.5 gigahertz. All right. So that signal that's transmit, that sine wave at 1.5 gigahertz, um, is actually picked up by the receiver that's in your, for example, in your iPhone. And that GPS receiver, when it receives the signal, it does some computation to extract the information from the signal. Okay? In particular, it extracts um, one the the identifier as to which satellite that signal came from so it extracts the information which satellite um, okay then the next thing it extracts is uh, where the satellite is located. Okay, so in order to triangulate your position, which will be the the last step, it has to know where the satellite is. So location of satellite. All right, and then the most important thing that it extracts is timing information. Okay? In particular, how long it took the signal that was transmitted by the satellite to be picked up at at the GPS receiver. So just call that timing information. And we'll also say that timing info tells how long it took the signal to propagate from the uh, satellite down to the GPS receiver. Okay? So maybe that's this distance. We'll call that T1. Okay. And it's actually going to get that information from all the different satellites. So we'll, we'll get a, say, a T2 from this guy and T3 from the third satellite. So as many satellites as it has in view and many satellites, it signals that it's picking up, uh, it'll, it'll figure out what this timing information. And that timing information is just the, uh, it tells, tells you how long it took the signal to go from the satellite to the receiver. And so just using the, the speed of light, right, it's really easy to calculate from that timing information the distance from the GPS satellite. Okay, so this is the key thing that we get at the end of the day. We get that from as many satellites as we're connected to. So the last thing it does is calculates position, right? And the way it does this is using triangulation. Okay? And this, of course, is a, a step that uses computing. Okay? 
course, all the steps along the way actually use some, some amount of computing in order to get the timing information uh, from the actual GPS signal from the electromagnetic wave. Um, there's a fair amount of computing that goes on. If you think about this, kind of step back, it, it, it's, it's kind of a small miracle that this all works, right? That you're able to hold in your hand a small device and that can tell you using signals transmit by satellites that are thousands of miles away um, exactly where you are on the surface of the Earth. It's, it's, um, it does. It seems like magic or a small miracle. And to make these things happen, to make that happen, there's, of course, uh, uh, signals, information, and computing. All of these things ha have to happen, and they have to work in unison. Okay, so the last motivating example that I'll, I'll talk about is uh, magnetic resonance imaging, or, or MRI. And I imagine a lot of the people, or at least some of, some of the people in the class have had an MRI done before. So how does this work? Well, first, uh, just kind of to describe what happens is they end up taking the patient, and the patient lies on this table, and maybe you put your head or whatever they're trying to image inside this gigantic magnetic uh, gigantic magnet. So that creates a magnetic field and the, the hydrogen atoms um, in your body then line up with that magnetic field. So the next thing that happens is there's a radio frequency pulse. Okay? So another electromagnetic signal and that perturbs the alignment of the hydrogen atoms with the magnetic field. So it aligns them in a, in a different position. And after that pulse, when the pulse turns off, the last thing that happens is those hydrogen atoms then realign, and they generate a measurable electromagnetic wave. And that, uh, that the, the power of the energy in that wave is proportional to the amount of hydrogen that was in a particular location that, uh, that's being measured. OK, so signals, information, and computing come up all over the place. One place a signal, of course, comes up is that return from the hydrogen atoms after the pulse turns off. So there's a signal here. Okay. You can imagine that signal it doesn't look anything like an image, right? So then we have, there's some large amount of computing, right? And that, that takes this information that's hidden in this signal and creates an image of what your brain might look like. So this is computing. Right. Okay. So I, again, this is another thing when you think about it. It's it's just kind of astounding that that this all works, right? I mean, if we had shown this to somebody a hundred years ago, it, it does. It looks like magic. So uh, very cool technology, and and really uses um, signal processing, um, signals, information, and computing. The last thing I want to do uh, is show you guys the course website. And um, that's at courses.moodle.wis.edu. Okay. So if you guys just go to courses.moodle.wis.edu, it'll probably ask you um, to, to log on, and you'll see a list of different courses you might be taking. For example, EC203. And so this is where all the information for the course is going to be posted. Um, right now, you can see there's not a lot up because this is just the first lecture. But uh, there are there are two things. Let's uh, first look at this PDF of the course information. Okay. All right. So uh, this PDF really just kind of summarizes okay, what what we're going to do in the class uh, and and all the details and logistics. Um, to to quickly go through it. Uh, Lectures, of course, are going to be um, Wednesday and Friday, and they're going to be in 1227 Engineering Hall, and they're at 11 a.m. And then we're going to have laboratories uh, or, or labs, and those are going to be uh, on Mondays at 11 uh, in the fourth floor of Went Library. Okay? And that's kind of a big open area, and there's uh, computers up there. Everybody has a computer. Um, and like I said before, uh, I'm the instructor. My name is Matt Malloy. My office right now is 3533 Engineering Hall, but that might change. Um, office hours are 
to be determined still. So there's two teaching assistants, um, Atul and Sumit, and we're going to set their office hours relatively soon also. And they're also uh, good to get a hold of if you have questions with the labs or homework. Okay, textbook, and the textbook is titled Signal Processing First. Okay, so <coughs> there's actually a web page to go along with this textbook. Uh, there's a, a link for it uh, on the Moodle site, and also um, if you just search uh, Google for Signal Processing First, you'll find this web page. Um, there's a number of things up on this web page. One, just a picture of the book, so you guys can make sure you're getting the first one. Uh, there's a few number of uh, errors in the book, um, and then there's also some information about MATLAB, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, so um, the next thing on here is is grading and exams. Um, the, the course grade will really be made up of um, two exams, uh, two midterm exams, excuse me, a final exam, uh, laboratory assignments, and then weekly homework assignments. So the, the homework uh, assignments are going to count for the, the least. Um, the lab assignments count for substantially more because those will also be substantially more work. Um, and I guess the, the, the sum total of the exams will really make up the majority uh, of your grade. So those percentages are uh, listed um, on, on this sheet. Okay. So before I say some a few things about laboratories and, and MATLAB, let me just go back to the course web page and uh, bring up the syllabus, which is also here. Click on syllabus. There's a PDF of the syllabus. So you can see uh, a list of what we're going to be covering each day, and this is slightly subject to change in terms of the, the topics that I'll actually talk about as the class progresses, but I'll, I'll be updating this. Um, two things that won't change will be the, the, uh, the date and time of the midterm exams. So the first exam will be on uh, February 26th, and that'll be in the evening. So we'll have an evening exam. Um, if you do have a conflict with that, please let me know as soon as possible. Um, the, the second midterm exam that'll be after spring break, that's on April 9th. Um, again, it's another another evening exam. Okay, and also you know the list of labs uh, is is also on this syllabus, but it it might get updated as we progress. Okay, and then finally we'll have the uh, the the final exam on May twelfth. Okay, so then uh, the next thing I want to talk about uh, is uh, the labs in MATLAB. So I'm assuming most people have not used MATLAB before, but MATLAB is a, a it's a programming language and a, a, a it, programming environment that enable us to do uh, manipulations of, of signals. Uh, and it's very widely used, very important in industry, and, and it'll also be important in the rest of your academic careers using this. So it's important to learn how to use it. Um, it does require a little bit of programming, but we'll start very slow, so you don't need to have any experience um, with with programming. Okay. So and if you don't, you know, if you don't know anything about MATLAB, you can just um, search for MATLAB and you know look at the Wikipedia page, read about MATLAB. Uh, learn learn a little bit about it, okay? But uh, I'll show you. Uh, I guess the very last thing that I want to do is just show you a quick demo in MATLAB. So this is MATLAB. This is uh, what it looks like when you open things up. And I can come in here and I can do um, simple arithmetic. You know, I can just add numbers four and five. But of course, it's much more powerful than that. So what I want to demonstrate to you guys now is um, a little piece of code that takes some audio that was recorded from a tuning fork. Okay, so a, a tuning fork right is used to to tune pianos and different instruments, and the idea is that it puts out a very clean, uh, precise sine wave around uh, uh, close to 440 uh, uh, hertz. Okay. So what this code is doing is it, it's loading in a file, an audio file, a WAV file. 
And that WAV file has the, the, a recording of a tuning fork. Okay, So let me just run this code. Okay, and you could hear the tuning fork. So the code loads it in, and then if you look down uh, a few lines down, I don't expect you guys to understand this yet, but um, within a few weeks, we'll, uh, you guys will be able to do this on your own. Um, after it loads it in, it plays it, and then it generates a plot. It generates two plots, actually. One is the time domain signal, and that's up here on the top. And if I zoom in on this time domain signal, I can see... Let's see if it zooms. Um, I can see a nice, clean sine wave. Okay, So this is the four, 440 hertz audio signal that, that your ears hear and that, that you hear is this clean sine wave. Okay, If you were to uh, come in here and zoom in, you could measure out this exact frequency, and it should be right around 440. So let me zoom back out. And you can also you can notice that the amplitude of this sine wave, as time progresses after you know two seconds, it's the amplitude is much smaller, right? It's, our ears perceive that as getting quieter. Okay. All right. So on on the bottom portion of this plot is what's called the the spectrum of this time domain signal. Okay. And this just represents the frequency content in in the signal. And we're going to spend the first couple of weeks of the course learning precisely and mathematically um, what this means. But you can see on, on, this, on the bottom plot, on the x-axis, uh, we have frequency. And if just for now, let's just ignore the negative frequencies and look at the frequencies on, on the right. We can see it looks like there's a lot of energy at 440 hertz, which is what we'd expect. Right? Because when we saw in this time domain signal, it was a nice sine wave at 440 hertz. Okay. So a nice clean sounding sine wave. Let me play it once more. Okay. The, the next thing I want to show you is um, now instead of using that clean audio from the tuning fork, I... I did something else. I played the tuning fork and then I kind of also just blew into the microphone and to add uh, noise to the background. And now let me run that and you'll be able to hear it quite, quite uh, clearly. Okay, I just kind of made a noise as I did this. And uh, you can see now the time domain signal looks substantially more noisy, right? It doesn't look, if we zoom in, you can still see that in the background there's a kind of a, a sine wave, but there's a lot of variation to it, a lot of noise. And that was really just the, the noise that I added um, in, uh, I, by, by blowing or making this noise into the microphone while I was recording this. So at the same time, we can look at this, this frequency plot again, and we can zoom in, and you can see there's again, there's still a peak at 440 hertz. But there seem to be, uh, unlike before, we look at this, there's a bunch of noise down here that's not at 440 hertz. Okay? So what the code, this code does, and I'll run this in a second, is it's basically, it's going to take anything that's below a certain level, and it's just going to set that to zero. And this is going to denoise uh, the signal. It's going to take away... Uh, the components that aren't right at 440 hertz. So let me just do that quickly. Okay, and then the code plays it back. So comparing these two plots, uh, the one on the left, right, is the noisy one. The one on the right, I've taken everything in the spectral plot and just set these, these numbers to zero. And if I zoom in here, I'll see now that I have a very clean sine wave again, right? And you could hear it, right? You could hear that the sine wave got substantially clearer. And you can see on the right that we've pushed all the, the, the frequency components that aren't at 440 hertz. We've set those to zero. 
So the code to do that is it's not too it's not too long, it's not too complicated. But let me let me run it once more just so you guys can hear the sounds again. Okay, that was the noisy uh, tuning fork. And now after denoising, sounds like a nice uh, clean tuning fork again. Okay, so this is uh, one of the things we'll learn to understand and we'll learn to code um, in MATLAB, in the laboratories, and, and in the class. Okay, that's, that's it for the first video lecture. Thanks, guys.